Hi guys, it's Chris back in the shed again with some more cider to taste. Except it's not cider today, or is it? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, a bit more cheese as well. Um, quite a different cheese to anything we've had so far. Um, but let's start talking about what we're going to drink first off. So we're going back to Borough Hill, Julian Templey's gaff in uh, Somerset, uh, Kingsbury Episcopi. Um, beautiful location. It's got a it's got a hill with a lone tree standing on top of it, right next to it. You can, it's, it's recognisable from quite a long a distance away, and you get an amazing view of Somerset from up there as well. So he makes various ciders. He also makes Somerset cider brandy, and he also makes this thing, which I've never had and wanted to try. It is Somerset ice cider. So there you go. So unlike grapes, where you would leave them on the vine through the cold months and it would freeze on the vine, and you take them and press them and extract the uh, the concentrated juice, leaving the frozen water behind. Can't do that so much with apples, so what they do with the, with the apples is, they press it, stick it in a barrel, put the barrel out in the orchard in the winter, it freezes, the water freezes, and then you can extract the juice that way. And that's how they do it. So this is a blend of several apples. Um, and it's fermented, uh, and aged in oak, I'm going to suspect because most of their stuff is aged in oak. Uh, so what you've got is concentrated apple juice. This uh, clocks in at 11.5%. This is a wine basically, it's a dessert wine. That's exactly what it is, it's a dessert wine. Um, closer to something like a Sauteau or a Tokai, that kind of thing. Um, and it's an awesome colour, you can see that without even, you know, without even opening the bottle. It looks amazing. So it says serve over ice on here. I'm not going to do that. I'm going for I'm just going to do it straight, um, just for tasting purposes. But before I do, let's have a look at it. I've got a tiny bit of cheese, a tiny bit of cheese. So here it is. I don't think you can see that. Is it going to pick it up? My camera hates when I put, put bits of cheese in front of it. So this is um, a washed red cheese called Monstale. No, I'm going to see it. I can just about get it. Just about get it. It's got a pinkish orange rind on there. Very smelly. Washed rind. It has a bacterial rind rather than a mould, like a brie. Or camembert, those white fluffy things there, moulds. This is bacterial, it's a washed rind cheese. They wash it over and over again when they're young, thus inhibiting the growth of moulds and encouraging uh, conditions which which allow for the growth of bacteria. Um, Brevi bacterium linens is the, is the bacterium that's most, is most usually named, or B linens for short, if you like. Um, but actually, it's coming to be known now that there's actually the, there's lots of varieties of bacteria that live on these cheeses. A lot of them have these pinkish orange hues, and they do imbue flavour to the cheese, but B linens was the one that people talked about the most and still talk about the most because it's it's still a study that's ongoing. Um, but yeah, what you associate them with is uh, real funky smells, real stinky cheeses, like the pink rinded cheeses, the sticky cheeses, the washed rind cheeses, they're the real pungent ones, like Epoise is one of the most favourite, uh, fam uh, famous. Uh, Munster is up there as well, I would say. In England there's a cheese called Stinking Bishop, which most people have heard of. That's a washed rind cheese and it's very pungent. It's actually washed in the juice of a Stinking Bishop pear, which is why it's called Stinking Bishop, but it is pretty aromatic as well, to boot. So, there you go. This is from um, the Vosges Mountains. So, Munster is typically made on the, the eastern side, so the Alsatian side of the Vosges. But um, this one is just the other side of Lorraine. But actually that whole area is... Um, is, is, is you can produce on either side. I think on the Lorraine side, they're called something like Jérôme or something like that. Same cheese, but with a different name. I think it's Jérôme. I could be wrong. I'm just saying that from memory. Um, but this is right on the border, so Munster. I visited this farm on my honeymoon because I took my wife to a cheesemakers in Alsace. Uh, our second honeymoon. So I was allowed to do it on my second honeymoon. Um, and we had a great time. They gave us a whole cheese as a wedding present, which was fantastic. We had it with an Alsatian wine. It was very, very, very pleasurable. Indeed. So the Vincent family, Odette is the cheese maker. Very nice people. Um, they, they, have, they milk go on cows and they are very proud of their, um, their um, haylage as well, like silage, haylage, what they feed to the cows. There's a lot of corn in there. We get a lot of fermentation going on. So you can get a lot of boozy flavours in the cheese from the stuff that the cows eat. It's this sort of haylage that they eat. Um, and they're very proud of it as well, the Vincent family. And quite right so too. So anyway, let's try this. Okay. Been looking forward to this. Been looking forward to this. I'm not going to go crazy. It's 11.5%. Let's pour it out. Okay, just missed. Just missed and got some on my hand. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, let's have a look at this. Colour on this is awesome. It looks more like a what, rum or something, I would say, in colour. Look at that. It's like a red 
cop it's 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 a deep amber with like a copper red hue to it as well gorgeous looking thing amazing color on that and if i swirl it around and look at the legs on it yeah it's got some thick legs coming down there so you can tell this is a bit more viscous a bit more boozy um if you're pairing wine with cheese the the, the best thing to pair the, the the most reliable pairing in my experience is sweet wines dessert wines tokais sultans possibly even nice cider um because all cheese has sugar oh, sorry all cheese has salt all cheese has acidity good dessert wines have sugar and acidity and sugar and salt great bedfellows opposites attract fantastic with the blue cheese with a higher percentage of salt like four percent something like that amazing with those things um but actually all cheese is salt and acidity so it, they tend to work with a lot of lot of things which people wouldn't expect and people don't really think of dessert wines as proper wines and in fact they're some of the greatest wines in the world okay let's give it give this a sniff wow <laughs> smells really good man it smells of apple but i'm getting like a aniseed i'm getting quite a distinct smell of aniseed licorice on the nose which i love yeah and then there's like there's that baked character there's that real rich sweet sugary dark sugar demerara sugar character as well but yeah hovering about in there between that sort of dark sugar and a rich apple there's there's definite sort of like aniseedy thing going on I think, I think. Let's try it. Okay. So this is phenomenal. It's really, really, it's really good. That is really really good the sugar it's like apple but it's but it's so much more concentrated than that but there's acidity in there from apple as well that's the thing it's not the sugar it's the, the, the acidity in there is amazing and balances that sugar perfectly so you can drink it again and again and again cut your palate with viscosity it's uh, man Man, it's just so well balanced between the sweetness, the sourness, the texture on the palate. My mouth's watering for days, which is great. It's what you want when you've got almond sugar. And that intense, rich, it's like toffee apple. It's like someone's concentrated a toffee apple and put it in a bottle. That's the best way I can describe it. But it's salted toffee, salted caramel, something like that. It's got, it's got something going on. It's not just... This isn't salty, don't think it is. But what I mean is there's something to balance the sweetness. There's acidity in there, so like massive, massive, thick toffee crust and then a nice sharp green apple inside to balance it. It's the best thing I can think of to describe it. It's really, really good. It's really good. Wow. Yeah, we have a winner. We have a winner. Now, it seems a shame to have anything with it. I, that's the honest truth. The greenness of the apple comes from, as you say, it's sort of builds and builds. It's really sorry, it's doing things while I'm talking to you in my palate. It's, really, it's just it's fantastic. But actually, if you go to, I've, I've seen um, Munsdale and washed rind cheeses served with dessert wines. Um, in restaurants, really high end, high end restaurants, actually, um, it's, it's almost the same as when you see being served like dessert wines with things like uh, foie gras or pate. There's a meatiness to these sorts of cheeses as well, like a sausagey, spicy, bacony meatiness to them, um, and that really works well. And there's a richness to them, a fattiness to them, and with the with the, and the salt, obviously, and the salt, the meatiness. There's something about the acidity and the sugar in dessert wines that really seems to cut through that fat and balance it really well. So let's see if it works with this Munster. And this is a top-end Munster. A really good Munster. These are great producers, these guys. Ferme de Houtreau. If you want to get it, Mons Cheese Mongers. Go to their website, go to their online shop, buy some. Okay. Mm. That's quite my palate. 
there's that meaty character, slightly boozy funky character as well, funkiness from the rind. Bold salt, really bold salt, but I love that. <laughs> and I would say that works a treat. I'm just getting like a pork flavour on the back end. Now, when I had that, the, the, something porky came out of it. Mm, I need more. I need more. You know what? Sometimes it, it hits me how lucky I am. I've lived something of a charmed life, I think. Um, I've um, got to drink some amazing things in my career in cheese and now in cider and in beer as well, actually. Um, and sometimes you just sit down, you, just, you suddenly realize actually, most people don't get to do this. Most people don't get to sit down and drink and eat these things as regularly as I do. I'm absolutely spoiled rotten. And these are brilliant. That Munster is brilliant. That ice cider, that ice cider is brilliant. That is what we're having at Christmas. That's the special drink. Forget port, forget it. This is what we're having at Christmas. Because it's absolutely awesome. It's something you want to sit down at the end of the meal and sip on. And it's like the best dessert you will ever have. And it actually works really well with the cheese. However, however, I still feel like they're better off they're better independently, even though they're actually good, go well together. I still think there's so much going on in both of them. They don't need anything else there. Um, and, and therefore, I think I will have them separately. But, by gum, <laughs> that is good. That ice cider is absolutely astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. Thank you very much, Julian Templey. Thank you, Matilda Templey, who, who, who gave it to me. I think I bought it. Whatever. I got, thank you for letting me buy it off you, Matilda. It's absolutely fantastic. If you can get some, please do get some. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. That was pretty special for me. I've got to say, it really was. Okay. Our Somerset Odyssey continues. We still have lots of things to try. So if you'd like to continue that journey with me, come and join me again next time. But until then, I'd like to say thank you very much and cheers.